In Canadian style democracy, the process begins with a first reading of the bill. After this, the bill is distributed to the Senate, who will do a simultaneous read and debate with Parliament called the second reading. After this, each institution will have their committees look into the bill and find out problems and merits. After it has gone through committee, it returns for a final vote called the third reading. If it passes in the Senate and the Parliament, each bill is handed to the Governor General. If he reads them, and they are identical in every way, they get signed into law. In modern times, it's the requirement of the Governor General to sign on to this process and not make any decisions for the Crown. But what if the process was reversed and the Governor General made decisions? That's the crux of the King Bing Affair, also known as the King Bing Thing, the King Bing Fling, and the First Constitutional Crisis. The affair begins with William Lyon Mackenzie King calling an election. In the standard process, the Prime Minister asks the Governor General to write a writ for an election, in which the Parliament of Elected Representatives is disbanded while the active executive still run the country during the election. So the election happens, and then what happens after isn't all that clear, and to this day it's not fully resolved. Traditionally, if the government in power is defeated, they resign as ministers of government, and the winner gets to form the government. In the 1925 election, Arthur Meaghan's Conservatives had won a minority government with 116 seats against 101 for the Liberals and 28 for the Progressives. With such a parliamentary makeup, it was certainly almost impossible for Meaghan to pass any laws. The Liberals and Progressives agreed they would form a coalition government, but when Mackenzie King went to the Governor General, Lord Bing of Vimy, he was instead asked to resign and allow Megan a chance to form government. The conflict between the two was resolved when Bing made King agree that if he was unable to maintain a full mandate, that Megan ought to be given a chance before an election is called. Shortly after the session began, King Appointee was found to be taking bribes, and it linked all the way back to King himself. The progressives were distancing themselves from the liberals, and now it looked as though Parliament wouldn't function. So, a vote of confidence came and failed to pass. Mackenzie King walked up to the office of Lord Bing of Vimy, asking for him to dissolve Parliament, and he said, No. Bing wanted the conservatives to have a shot governing the largest party in government. King attempted to do everything he could to show Bing was being unfavorable. He sent requests to appoint new ministers to Bing, but he would not approve them. Eventually, King would step aside and Megan would be given a chance to run the government. But Megan had a problem himself. You see, any member that becomes a minister would have to give up their seat and run in a by-election. When you are short on 20 members, and you lose another 20 members to by-elections, Megan was kind of in a problem with a, a, ch a challenge to his authority. Megan would instead create ministers without portfolios who would not have to run for by-elections. King saw this as collusion between Megan and the anti-Canadian Lord Bing of Vimy, who was seen as abusing his powers. Megan's term lasted less than a month, as the progressives and liberals had proposed a vote of confidence which of course failed. Everyone wanted to go into an election, and in the end, Mackenzie King would win again with a majority government. Lord Bing of Vimy would stay as Governor General, right up until the 1926 Balfour Declaration. Canada would choose their first Governor General in 1931, after signing the Treaty of Westminster, which made Canada a fully independent country. Canada would have a constitutional trouble all the way through the 70s and deep into the mid-90s. And then the issue itself would return in 2008, when Stephen Harper was elected Prime Minister of Canada, but all the opposition parties wanted to form a coalition government. And that'll be our story for next week.